Is it over? Can we go outside now? Is it over? Can we go outside now? Please? Can we go outside now? What's up, everybody? Steve Grillo here with another quarantine at home aftershock special in Hell's Kitchen in my apartment. Quarantining as best I can, which is the new way of life. Day question of quarantine, I don't know. I've lost track of what day is it. Is it Tuesday? Is it Saturday? Is it Friday? Does it make a difference? The weekends are all gone. It's just one weird roll into another day, into another day. But we're here. We're good. We're taking care of business. And I just want to say that I appreciate everybody out there that tunes in. I want to say one big absolute thank you to my producer, Noah, who's gone above and beyond anything you could possibly ask for in a person who's not getting paid. <laughs> I appreciate everything. And one day we are going to get paid, my brother. And I want to thank to, uh, so everybody knows I was on the Battle Chats uh, network and um, I'm kind of uh, on my own right now, but it doesn't mean that uh, we don't work together over a battle chat. So I want to thank them because they are not now a sponsor. Be sure to check out all their great content on Battle Chats, the YouTube channel. Every Thursday night at 9 o'clock, I will be on with the very talented and beautiful Lindsay. We've been doing Q&As about everything I did all week. So this Thursday at 9 p.m., check it out on BattleChatsGo.com. And all the, oh, I always like to thank my sponsors in the beginning, you know, people like Roy at brightshot.com, uh, Roy at brightshot.com, all the, the best LED light in the business. Uh, my next guest would know what, how to appreciate how great Brightshot is because they have no heat. I have a very talented actress waiting in the background, talent, talented actress and political analyst. They actually go together. So uh, Mindy Robinson is going to be on the show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. She's waiting in the back room, in the back, what do you call it, like a green room, this virtual green room, if you will. She's on the show tonight. I'm very excited because she's a friend, first and foremost, but she's also a very talented actor. She's done 159 movies, and she also has a very political show that she does called Red, White, and F.U. The girl is not afraid of anybody or their opinion, and uh, she's going to be on the show tonight. We're going to talk about how we know each other, what kind of, uh, we have a couple of fun stories, and then we also, she's going to talk about her show and her her take on what's going on in the world right now. Then you got uh, my boy Richard at Frenzy.com, F-Sharp Tax Management. Still not too late to get your taxes done, and I keep telling you, Richard at Frenzy.com. So uh, you want to go to him. The man is amazing. Amazing. And we got the new YouTube channel up. We've got a bunch of people on there. We're live on Facebook. And uh, Prosecco and Palms, if you want to check out a awesome, awesome lifestyle blog, Alyssa Marie at Prosecco and Palms. She, is, she has all the latest fashions for you ladies, All the, where you can find all the latest fashions for the cheapest prices, what to wear, how to wear it. And it's a great thing for guys because if you want to buy something for your girl, you don't, don't do it yourself. Just, just don't do it. Go go check out Prosecco and Palm. See what Alyssa's wearing, what she's doing. She has she's up on all the latest fashions. So guys, you, you'll know what to buy your girl for her birthday if you love her. You just want to get her something because she she was good in bed the night before. Go get her something nice. Go go to Prosecco and Palms. Check out Alyssa Marie. She'll she'll tell you what to get. Trust me. Okay. Uh, what did I miss? Anything? What did I miss? No one. Sterling assault. But well, look at these rings. Come on. Look, they have a custom made. Look, an aftershock ring. Where was it? I don't even know my left and right. Aftershock XL. Uh, Sterling Assault. Alfie is so talented. It's unbelievable. You go to SterlingAssault.com. You can check out his catalog and order offline. And if you want something custom, you reach out to Alfie. And he, he will design it and he will blow your mind out the door. So mention Grillo's Aftershock XL. Get 10% off. And that's about it. So without further ado, I would like to bring on my next guest. Wonderful, talented, beautiful, funny, amazing woman, Miss Mindy Robinson. Everybody, hey, how you doing? Oh, I was saying before, I love your backdrop. That's I love it. you, Snoopy. I've seen all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, I got Snoopy back there. I got, I got a uh, Snoopy. I got wait, I got R two D two. Yeah, I'm, I'm like a five year old. So well, but you can drink. You're like a five year old that can drink. I like. Yeah, that. you know that. <laughs> <laughs> we had some interesting evening with you. Are you guys officially married, or we're you just? Not, we're just 
living it's been like seven or eight years again once you've been married so many times they don't really get you the toaster anymore you know yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly my friend my friend got married right and then six months he got divorced and then in six months he's getting married again i was like i'm not giving you a gift bro you're Did not getting a gift the same thing they ordered the first wedding yeah. again like yeah yeah I was, I, I, i'm not charlie brown i'm not trying to kick the football okay <laughs> <laughs> So how is everything going? How how are you dealing with all this? It's been some crazy times. Uh, you know, obviously I had three movies I was going to do this month and it kind of worked out because uh, I, I, I'm running for Congress. That was the other thing. That's I so awesome. I love that because you know what? You're going to go and shake the shit out of everything. <laughs> Well, we need it. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where everyone pays attention to the presidential election and no one actually pays attention to the representatives in Congress. And that's really where we get stalled. We get stuck. Um, yeah. but currently, no matter where, you, you know, I, I'm in southern Nevada and currently we are a Trump voting district with a Democrat that voted for impeachment. This yeah. should be an easy win. But if you see, if you see Nancy Pelosi, will you kick her in the cut for me? I'll give you five <laughs> bucks. <laughs> I just hate that woman so much. I don't like politics. But I just I, I just hate her. She's like the fucking crib keeper. Oh, I just she's so full of shit. Well, I would be waving at her if I win this gig. So uh, I hope so. You got the right people behind you. You know, I'm trying. I mean, as soon as I announced, I was at the Plurapalooza. I was the headliner. I announced it. And then a few days later, the quarantine happened. And I'm just like, of course it did. Um, you know, so it was kind of interesting because, like, you know, I'm a Republican, but I'm not an old, tiny, hardcore, traditional Republican. Obviously, I'm pretty vocal and, and kind of a redneck. And, um, you know, and people are like, you have to kiss babies and do all these events and kiss everyone's butt. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I have this online platform and I, and I use it to highlight social issues. We, we act, you know, we do a lot of activism on it. And we get things done. They didn't want to hear it. And then the quarantine happened and I'm the only one with an online platform. And I'm just like, well, you, you know, it was free. You could have used it this whole time. So I've been using it to talk to constituents. And it's actually been a lot of crazy things going on in the state of Nevada. Yeah. Uh, I've never Got that, that crazy talked. Vegas mayor. Jesus. Actually, as the mayor, I'm fine with it's the governor. Um, the stuff, I and mean, he's trampling the constitution, like the things you grew up. You know, freedom of you know assembly, freedom of religion. He wouldn't allow Easter service in a drive-in safe setting, and I, I've got issues with that. You know, uh, I, I think this quarantine should have been for the sick and those at risk and those that take care of them, and it would have enabled a lot more supplies and and money to help those people, not shut everything down and. And now I think we're at the point where, like, I just want to go outside. Well, I've been, I never obeyed the quarantine. You wouldn't, you wouldn't even I have to. I never once obeyed the quarantine. Yeah. But you wouldn't even have to, like, uh, have, like, higher security. <laughs> <laughs> if every, yeah, but, but, people people don't. Person, you don't usually need security, and they don't throw you a lot of security. No, no. Well, hold on a second. Uh, Noah, show everybody who her boyfriend is. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Noah. It'll be a second. Well, everybody, when you see who her boyfriend is, you'll understand why she does not need security. We'll wait. We'll wait for a second because I don't even want to say. Yeah, it. it'll tell you I'm scarier. I've got a lot less to lose, you know. Oh uh, yeah. I, down for a fight, so. I wouldn't think you would. I well, especially if you're running for Congress. Keep watching it. <laughs> yeah. So, um. So yeah, I, I, I have. I want to talk about the awesome time. Oh, there's her husband, everybody. <laughs> her, her boyfriend. I know. Well, well that two time. Heavyweight champion of the world, Mr. Randy Couture, who happens to be one of the nicest people on the planet. I feel like um, no one's looking beyond that dress. I think no, no, no way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know the the uh, yeah. Um, on, oh my God, why can't I think of it? <laughs> I'm having such a brain fart right now. Um, do you remember how we met? Do you remember how we met? Oh yes, we do. That's another thing I wanted to talk about. We met. We did a pilot together out in L.A. Mm -hmm. And I wish you got picked up because it was, it was like, what American American, what was it American? I'm ad having busters. We would take oh, yeah, ad busters. commercials and yeah. we would actually test them out to see if they worked or not. And more than not, it did not work. Yeah, it was it was, was kind of lip roller, and I was just covered in cat hair, but we couldn't get it off. No, we couldn't. I, I was drawing. I remember you just yeah. like oh, I was rubbing it all over your ass, and it just wouldn't come <laughs> off. Was just, God, it was just like cat hair. Yeah, it was real cat hair too. Yeah, I know you brought a bag <laughs> of cat hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we met on the set of there, and we just like hit it off as friends. We've been, uh, uh, we became Facebook friends, and we always just kept in touch. But so one of my favorite things, uh, and, and I have the shirt here. So and she, they were nice enough to invite me out. To, you, it was like your your anniversary. What the fuck you invited me for? <laughs> I, 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 you want my ugly mug on your anniversary, but it was so cool. So we go out to uh, Del Frisco's, Del Monaco's, Del Frisco's. Uh 
And um, I don't know. I always get it confused, but yeah. Yeah, it's still, it's still Frisco's. And we're having dinner, and Randy's got this big, giant steak knife in his hand, and he puts it on the table, and it falls off. And, of course, he's got quick reflexes. Randy snatches the knife up, and he goes – and we couldn't see it. And it, the look on his face just dropped, and he picked the knife up, and it was on the blade. And he opened up his hand, and it was gushing blood. Mm -hmm. And a testament there, of course, he feels no pain at all whatsoever. <laughs> um, he no. still he still had blood on his hands. So we finished up the Del Frisco's, and then we went to McCoy's. And well, he did one of the funniest things. is an Irish bartender, Stephen at McCoy's, who's a huge fan of Randy. And uh, we, he totally fucked with Randy. It's how cool he is. He, he walks in, he slams his hands on the bar and goes, you! I heard you're a Conor McGregor fan. What the fuck's that about? And Steven like almost shit his pants because he really he really loves him so much. So and then we took pictures, and Randy put his hand around my like and he took a picture of me. And the next day I was I, I like I I, I I like went I got up and I still had the shirt on. Like I put it on to go do something, and my buddy goes, "What the fuck is that in your shirt? Is that blood? <laughs> is that blood?" And I go, what do you mean? And I look, and it's fucking Randy's blood all over my shirt. Look, I got it right here. It's like the shroud of courage. <laughs> yeah. You kept it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, look, and like it's right here. Everybody, R Randy Couture's blood. Where, where is it? <laughs> right there. <laughs> you, you think it'll go for some money on eBay? Do people pay big money for that? I'm on the background, honestly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, But it was so fun hanging out with you guys. It was such a great time. It was fun. So what have you been doing like in this quarantine? What's, what's, what's your, how are you coping? How am I coping? I, I'm an East Coaster too. Don't forget I'm Southeastern Mass. We, coping is, we don't even think of that word. Uh, I have been through a few, few food rallies fighting for everyone's rights. Uh, I'm all about freedom, kind of a patriot. And yeah, I don't like what's going on. I don't like this overreach, this, uh, you know what I mean? I feel like the quarantine was selective and, and we won't even get too political in here, but I just saw a lot of issues. And I wanted to do something. So I've been going to rallies. I've been trying to just defend people's rights and and a lot of online stuff because we're kind of limited, you know, just to that. But, you know, I'm running a campaign for Congress in a quarantine. So I'm literally me and my campaign manager, Molly, we're out there putting signs in the ground, which is not easy in Nevada. That ground is hard. Like, you yeah, know, we're, sure. we're literally going door to door because we can't get a company to do it. And, and just, you know, out there booking it. I mean, grassroots is an understatement, but I love it. And actually getting to talk to the people and especially in a time like this when the politicians in power aren't, you know, representing the people or speaking out. I think it's really important to uh, to do that. So that's my shameless plug. Yeah. And uh, the mail out ballots, the rules changed. It's bizarre, but the mail out ballots, everyone's getting one now and they go out in like a week or two. And I'm like, Whew. Did, did you get a uh, stimulus check? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, me neither. But yeah, I, I guess that's good. probably because I owe too much. <laughs> <laughs> I so. should have gotten one. I I didn't get one. Though. Well, considering I like if you're uh, you're an actress and you're you're obviously out of work, do you get it? Do you get um? Oh wait, I just found this. Uh, do you get a uh? uh out, are you on unemployment? Is what I'm I'm trying to get to. I'm not technically I'm self-employed. Uh, in between gigs, I don't really think any of the stuff that can help me. And honestly, it's a joke here in Nevada. Uh, like I said, I'm running for Congress for a reason. Uh, it's been about five to six weeks to this quarantine. And no one can get through to unemployment. And if they do, it gets denied. And then no one's there to, okay. Like people literally call when the lines open and the queue is full for the day. And that's how it's been for about five to six weeks. So people are getting irritated. They just want to go back to work. I think we should just do that. Yeah, I know. I, I just, if I'm an essential. Home, if, you're, if you're sick, stay home. If you to take care of those people, stay home, do the right thing. But yeah. if you're healthy, I think we're fine to go out. I mean, I'm yeah. I be pack when nah, it's fine. I think they should have if you're going to a place, they should be able to take your temperature with one of those like thermal things. Because like, you know, if, if you have a fever, you shouldn't be out. And some people don't care if they have a fever or not. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense. Like uh when Brandy he got on a plane to go to the Arnold, which was only half run anyway at that time, they took his temperature to get on. We're like, what if you get a fever on the way home? You're just stuck where you are. Yeah, you know, it's just weird. And then there's a few weird things that are going on. Like our governor was so proud of the fact that they were using our cell phones to track us. You're like, oh, you guys aren't going anywhere. I'm like, okay, number one, most of the state is uninhabited. It's, it's just desert land. And number two, why are you tracking me on my phone? And number yeah. three, they wanted to let people know if someone was sick or not. Like if I'm near a stranger, their phone would send me a warning letting them know if I'm sick or if I had it. I'm like, I'm sorry, that's kind of against uh, the Constitution, my right to privacy and health care and, and all that other stuff. So No, no shit. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, not at all. No. I think we all get a taste of socialism and the government taking care of us, and I think we're done with it. You know. I know. I, mean? I gotta get. Uh, I gotta get a quote of this. So uh, my first show that I had was uh, really kind of cool. It was at, at DMC from Run DMC oh, and, yes. and, and MC Search. I, I was MC Search from Third Base. Uh, so DMC came on to surprise him. And it was so cool because they're both like two of my like hip hop icon, like legends. I love them so much since I was like 12. And at the end of the show, I said, so, because I, I usually, uh, at seven o'clock in New York, the whole place goes crazy. Like people go on the roof to start applauding for all the uh, frontline workers at seven o'clock every day. So I brought them up to the roof to see, you know, uh, if they wanted to, you know, to see what New York was doing. And then I said, do you guys want to maybe get out a little group jam and do a little a quick little rap thing for, for all the frontline workers? And they just stopped and they both went, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. Know. So, but today was, today was like, it's been so shitty in New York, cold and rainy for like the past four days. Today was the first amazing, beautiful day. And so they had the Blue Angels fly over. So one of my friends uh, brought me over to Jersey City so because it was so cool because the backdrop was New York. And just to watch them fly over, just to – I kind of got a little choked up, I got to be honest. You know, watch these people come fly over and just like – to just, they flew over mostly hospitals to show all the doctors and yeah, the nurses. Yeah, the Thunderbirds and, do that here. We, climbed, well, we went up on the mountain to watch yeah. it. All no, the yeah, that, I, the Thunderbirds were also there. So I have a little clip of what it looked like. But someone took this from the top of the Empire State Building. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, like really cool. They flew right over us. That's cool. Yeah, totally. So uh, I, I was a little distracted for half a second before because I just remembered something. Uh, Noah, you want to show the picture? Uh-oh. Yeah. There's Randy's hand. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. So yeah. It, yeah. And then this is uh, this is Stephen, the bartender that he, that he screwed with. We had so much fun that night. You guys can drink. I can hang with you anytime. That's that's kind of what we do almost every night. Like the quarantine has been the least amount of drinking and, and going out that I've ever done in my life. Normally we're on the road, we're living out of suitcases, uh, and this uh, we've just been home. So yeah, at home doing that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, I cook like every night now. I usually don't cook because like, and I can cook. Like last night I I'm made. Uh, out of my rotation. It's been so long. Like yeah. Easter, they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm making a goose. They're like, wow, that's fancy. And I'm like, well, we killed it, and we're eating around the bullets. Yeah, so yeah. Not, not like not. <laughs> no, I, I, I see. I, that's why we were totally like if we lived around each other, we would be totally hanging out a lot. I, I have, I, have, I, I have a bike. I actually brought my bike down I'm to the lucky. city. Did you see, I got a motorcycle for Christmas. I've been. Learning. Oh, that's what you get. It's been a great time. The apocalypse, no traffic. What'd you get? An eight eight three. No, it's a van van. It's a retro style. It's like the smallest bike that's street legal. Cause okay. I was sure. on a taller one and I didn't last very long. So. Yeah, well, you're you're a tiny little thing. I am almost five for five. Plus yeah, five. no, but you're 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 very, you have a small frame. Parts of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My brain is huge. Though. Yeah. I think about that all the time. It's huge. Yeah. So you go. You can pick to put the picture up. No, uh, that's uh, that's uh, <laughs> Mindy and Randy and Stephen, the bartender that's at McCord. Looks drunk. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So, but you know what? I, I, you know, here's one thing that I love about you. Like, you have the the boobs and the hair on purpose because it's a fucking psych out strategy. Because you're so fucking smart. Like, people look at you and like, like, oh, she's just that bubble headed bleach blonde. But you're not. You're you're so you're so on point. Everyone's like, oh, you and your blonde hair, and they always have to mention my body. And I'm like, I don't know the negative you guys are pointing out right now. Yeah. Everyone else is fine with it. If that's the only thing you got, I don't think you have anything. So now, because like I can see people going, oh, what, what, what is she doing? She's just fucking, she's got blonde hair. She's running. Well, tell people your background. Like, you're no joke. Yeah, you know, no. Uh, obviously, <laughs> my, I have a lot of background in, in acting and hosting and even stand up comedy. And, but originally I went to college for, for political science and American history. And so when the election happened, I was just on my platform and just talking about politics. And I did it in a way that was, you know, educational and informative and funny because sometimes it can be really depressing out there. And I would take like just messed up stories and stuff like that. And I would make it funny and I would do the jokes and I would, because I was a blue check, I would troll, you know, leftist celebrities, you know, when they're, when they act a fool and I would just own them. Like if you Google Cardi B and Minnie Robinson, I, I owned her. She was so dumb. And, yeah. uh, you know, I love you on Twitter. Me. It was 
like, a, I'm like, I looked good. It was like a hot picture of me, like an American flag bikini. And she's like, ew, you're gross. And people are like, no, that's okay. They're like, it was just bizarre. Yeah. But it's like, because please. Of the blue tag, yeah, people will see and it will show up in their notifications. And so I was in a way kind of speaking and saying all those things that everyone wanted to say to these people, but forcing them to see it. And yeah. it was just, it's fun. I love doing it. And, and yeah, because you're putting it. politics and doing things like that. And uh, people always said I should run for office. And I'm like, eh, I feel like I could do more work online, doing this national platform. And then I see things that are wrong and no one's doing anything about it. So you, here we are. Uh, you, put, you put people on, in your place on Twitter, man. I love like all your tweets. I should have had Noah look up some of your tweets because like, yeah. like you, 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 you talk some truth, man. You, you, you go right through the hypocrisy and you put people in their place. What's your favorite Twitter war that you had with somebody? Well, Cardi B one was funny uh, because here's the thing. She said she wanted to run for Congress, but she did so in a tweet that was so poorly put together that I red penned it, fixed all the grammatical and spelling errors and like, oh, yeah. back. and I said, my cat was more qualified to run for Congress. She loses her mind. Like she said, she tried to shame me with pictures saying I was ugly and gross and all this stuff, and no one was buying it. I'm not, I'm not full of myself, but I'm not, you know, unfortunate. Yeah. So it, it was just bizarre. Uh, I always troll like Alyssa Milano, which you don't understand. Oh, not she fun. pisses me people. off. Just, I, I did... run into these people. I'm not yeah. going to call them. And I remember being at a panel, and I, I troll the hell out of her. She's so dumb and hypocritical. And I'm telling my show's producer, I'm like, hey, do you, you think she knows who? Yeah, she knows. Like, she's just staring at me. But I have to meet these people. I have to run into Avenetti and Ron Perlman and all these like, you know, idiots. Uh, you know, I actually have to run into them in my real life. So that that's that's like Twitter in real life. I have to deal with that. Oh, but I glad we do it because hey, I'm I'm just saying what everyone else is thinking. Um uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's 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 tough because uh if you outright uh back the president up, whether it's I'm talking about logic and reason. OK. And if it's if it's logical and it's reasonable and, and you can actually look at it and go, it's, the, the red chair is red and they're they don't care. They're just going to say it's fucking blue just to fucking because he said it's red. Oh. It's, it's not helping our country out at all. Well, I think people see that now. I think there's a couple of things that happen. I think when this thing happened with China, the coronavirus, you know, Trump said, all right, let's close off travel from China. And one of the people, the, the left, was like, oh, you're racist, you're xenophobic. And then a month, and meanwhile, they're doing a fake, you know, impeachment for no reason, costing us money. And then a month later, they're like, you didn't do enough. You didn't do it early enough. And you're like, we, we see you. Like, all of America sees you. It's Pelosi in, in it's Pelosi in Chinatown going, don't listen to him. Come down to Chinatown. Right. Come down. He, no, no, the, the, he's wrong for closing the borders. Now that Twitter, that tweet is completely gone. And now she's like, you should have done this earlier. The blood is on his hands. That, I can't, I can't, that. Like, I can't I, stand that. You're a fucking, don't, don't be a fucking, a blatant fucking hypocrite. I, you know, I, I'm not political, but still, don't be a blatant hypocrite. If you did something. It's projection, it's hypocrisy. It's, and you know, and I think people have woken up to me. Like I'm, I'm a, you know, a redneck Republican. I've kind of always kind of been used to this kind of stuff. But, you know, and I think even a classic liberal, the classic liberal you would have known 10 years ago, is would not be considered a liberal today. It's just gone insane. And I think people are waking up to it. It's it's I've never been about, you know, Republicans are gonna vote Republican, Democrats are gonna vote Democrats. You're and what, really what fighting it, over the independents and everyone in between. And how do you win that? With information, the media, social media, all these things that are we're we're kind of waking up to how manipulated it is when we see mainstream news channels using fake footage lying to us, cutting up stories, re, un, you know, just taking things out of context. And then you see it happen in front of the world. You're like, we've got a problem. Yeah, but when, when when they go, when they're shown, you know, look, you're lying. They go. Yeah. And the other thing is the stimulus bill. I think a lot of people woke up with that. We know I, I our economy stopped. We are, our backs are against the wall. We needed this stimulus bill to keep small businesses and individuals going. What does the, what do the Democrats do? They put like four billion billion for New York museums, they want to fund the Kennedy Center, they got tax solar credits, they're getting child care for themselves in Congress. I got an issue with that. I mean, you knew the world was gonna look through this thing and that's what you put in. Like you didn't even care that we were gonna be like, wow. So yeah, yeah. I get a stimulus check, which I'm probably not gonna get anyway for twelve hundred bucks. I just gotta pay ten K in taxes, you know, over the next twenty years. I, I like I like the uh, the people that uh he's not my president, but they ran and put that fucking money in the bank. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, so, I think, like I said, if you're in Nevada, and I know there's a few other states with, that are issues with it, if you thought your government was going to take care of you and it's been week five or six or four and you still don't have an unemployment check, or you, now magically you don't qualify. And I think that's the problem. There's been people living off welfare our entire lives. And, yeah. and you have people like me that have always worked. I've never been on unemployment. I've never gotten any assistance, not even in college. And then when you actually do need it, it's not available to you. And you're like, hmm, this is why I like my guns. And this is why I don't expect the government to take care of me. I truly believe in capitalism and freedom. I'd rather die free than, you know, locked in my basement for a year. There are people that think we should be like in our house for a year. I don't know whether they're just like independently wealthy or what they think they're going to do, but uh, this is America. I'm, I'm good. I want to go back uh, to work. Now. America, America. So do you, 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 are you hunt? Yeah, I have cool. been eating, so. Oh, really? Hold on. Let me, I'll give you two seconds. I, well, hold on. I, I believe in that much. I don't like the trophy so much. It's kind of weird. All right, better. I'm just eating everything. So th this is the picture I have on my uh, on my wall. That was the first turkey I got. Oh, turkeys are fun, aren't they? Yeah, it's about the season's about to start. I don't know if you can see it. Is it season? I thought the season was fall. That that had a, no, it's, a, it's spring. You got different turkeys too. You know, I didn't yeah. know there's different species of turkeys. That, 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 that was that was They're the bull. Lots of raptors, man. Yeah, man, yeah. Crazy. Oh, I was. I know it was my first time hunting, and that wasn't the first time hunting. It was the first thing that I got. Do it. <laughs> that was good. I can do turkey calls. I know. Yeah, so I'm really good with the diaphragm call. So we were just about to call it quits, and we heard one, and my buddy, and he, and he it started coming, so he dropped back, and I posted on the tree, and he came in, and I rolled him. And he was still alive. And I've never done this before. I stepped on his head and I pulled him like this and he was beating the crap out of me. <laughs> so uh, it had a nine and a half inch beard and a two, a two and a half enough. inch spur. Yeah. So it, it was, it was. It, I'll give you recipes for days. Yeah. I, what I, 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 do, we've been eating all like the stuff in the freezer because there was no meat in the grocery store for like two weeks. Uh, apparently people don't understand the point of uh, non-perishable products. Yeah. But <laughs> we've been eating like goose, duck, venison. Elk, I love venison. Uh, elk is delicious. There's not, yeah, I just, and it's so lean. Like, if I make a pot pie, I'll just make it with elk. It's better, personally, and stuff like yeah, that. It's yeah, organic. it's, it's organic. It's <laughs> organic. So, <laughs> what I did was, I don't, I, I, in my past life, I must have been a butcher or something, because I never butchered an animal before. So, instead of just, like, doing the whole thing like a traditional turkey, I hung it up. The breast a wild turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I did. So, I, I cut around the back. Or the legs, and, if you're I, I pulled the back feathers off because those are really beautiful and cut off the fan and I nailed it to a board and I salted it and made a big trophy. That's and then I, I I cut the breast out and I put them out and I cut the, I gave the legs to my friend and I just sauteed one in lemon, white wine and garlic and the other one in jerk sauce. I put it on the other side it's of the, sauce, right? no, it was my friend's mother. My friend's mother made a, she was from uh, Trinidad. She made jerk sauce. It was so good. And I put it on the other side of the oven, and I turned the heat up, and I let it sit there for like two hours. Oof. It just—it was it, there was no gamey taste to it. It was just so delicious. Oh, I like making a good turkey soup with it. Oh yeah, well I didn't think about that, man. Turkey pot pie. Yeah. Oh man, I gave the I gave the skull to my tattoo artist, and I I had the beard, and I gave the fan to my friend. My wife would that. My ex wife would. It's and hers. We got turkeys on the same. I got the first turkey. That's what I'm excited for. But there's yeah. a really fun. Uh, I want right, my first turkey hunt was just. I was just watching. I was watching Randy do a competition or something with Dan Henderson, the other. Oh friend. yeah, another tough one. Another badass. I'm hiding in the bush, and I'm looking at. I'm like, I'm awfully close to this turkey. They're probably not gonna boom. I'm like, no, oh. hello. <laughs> they shot that thing like ten times. It wouldn't yeah. die. And so no. when I went for my hunt. I'm like. Gosh, I really don't want to relive that moment. Like they had to chase that thing, jump a fence. I, it, was, yeah. it was like a horror movie trying to if get I, that turkey to not die. If I didn't jump on it, I, it definitely would have taken off. But like I was trying to get that crack, but the ground was soft. So I was just having holding it, the head in place. And my buddy, who's an ex-army ranger, he jumped. He jumped on top of it. It was beat. It was beating me up. It was like boom, 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 boom. boom. Yeah, but that guy, I had it. Those spurs were like this. Well, my, I had a decoy out. It was raping the decoy. I'm like, I don't even feel bad about murdering this turkey right now. What yeah. is the crime? <laughs> <I don't laughs> decoy, not consent. It was a male decoy, too. So, yeah. I guess the turkey wasn't too picky. Yeah, I, I bow hunt uh, during the, I bow hunt for deer, and I use the shock of a turkey because, like, 
it's too dangerous if you skewer it and you, you got to get it. You got a broad head full of like flailing around, yeah. you know. But um, I saw a video the other day of somebody that it just turkey's head was gone. <laughs> Took the turk the head right off. <laughs> the broad head went. No, no, no head, no head. It was so cool. Um, my buddy's like one of the, the my buddy Mario Montana. He's like one of the top three. He, he shoots in competitions. He's like number three, and uh, he he was with Hoyt, and he couldn't use the Hoyt bow anymore because he was with another with, sponsored by another thing. And he gave me it's like the cat. It's like a Ferrari of bows. It's so nice. He's like Steve. I know you'll use it. I can't use it anymore. So I was like, oh, so I got a really nice one. But so uh, let's go back to politics. So. Uh, Okay. <laughs> People are probably disgusted right now. They're like, you just, you grillo, you're fucking killing animals. Or they're hungry. They're probably hungry, honestly. Yeah, right. I want turkey pot pie. That's good. So, I'll send uh, you that recipe. I don't know oh, if it's all like perfect yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I will, uh, what you would call it? My phone doesn't stop. Is You have the same problem? Your phone doesn't stop. It doesn't stop ringing. There's people just like, there's constantly oh, something going on. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so, Biden, uh, does he have a snowball chance in hell? <laughs> like, they even, like, you see videos of this guy groping and, like, flailing and, like, with little girls and stuff like that. And they will take that over Trump. Like, like I, I was hoping someone, that they, they got someone least decent to run against him. <laughs> well, I'm sorry if anyone's a Democrat. Uh, they're not going to do that to you. They are not going to give you a real candidate. Um, yeah. I've been saying for about six months now, because, you know, we've been trying to predict what the, the DNC is going to do. And back when Biden was having like 12 people at a rally, I'm like, this is who they're going to pick. And people are like, why? I'm like, he's a deep state pawn. He will do, he's been lobotomized. He will do whatever they need and or want him to do, whatever sword to fall on, because he's not a candidate. Like, I, I people, it just blows my mind how an awful candidate he is. And so I think the DNC's head, um, Biden's going to win against Trump, like, no, you have to know that he's not going to win. And I think what you're going to see here is you're going to see Biden step down. I think it's even sooner. I thought he would at least get in and then step down and the VP would take it over. But I wouldn't be surprised if the plan isn't for him to step down right before, the, you know, November. And then the DNC can put in whoever they wanted up this whole time anyway. You think it's, it's going to be Hillary? Over Democratic voters again. And I kind of feel bad because I, you know, in my heart, I, I'm actually more nonpartisan than people give me credit for. I, I'm, yes, I'm a redneck Republican, but I believe there should always be this balance between conservative and liberal. You know, if conservatives have the run of everything, we can get a little cold. We're a little like, ah, you know, we're not, the, you know, we're just different people. We're more independent, more individual. And in a true liberal, a classic liberal, would really want to help people and care people and, and do more like that. But I got 20% battery life. I'm just going to keep that Okay. Going. And I uh, know we drained like 50% of it. That's crazy. And so there's supposed to be this balance and, and it's supposed to make, that's what makes America great. You know, usually conservatives end up doing the fiscal stuff, the money stuff, and then liberals will let them do their charity and all that kind of stuff. As long as they don't get too crazy, as long as we don't get too crazy, it works out. And I don't want to say we, we don't have that anymore. We don't have that balance, balancing out. We've got a, an extreme left that's radical. That's a minority, but loud. And their positions of power, their positions to mess with people, they're very nasty and mean. And you know, there's friends right too. I deal with them too. But I think, you know, this day and age, you saw what they did. I'm not a Bernie fan. I think he's a communist. But then watch the DNC just screw him over for the second time running, uh, then put in Biden. You know, it, it's funny how, not together, but like it's supposed to be like Trump supporters, racist, white supremacists. I'm like, you had nothing but like white guys. Like you put up a white guy too. Like you weren't any different. Uh, so I think a lot of, you know, Democrats, real voting Democrats, are probably going to stay home. Uh, they should be pissed off at what their party their party has done the last two elections to, to even consider Biden a candidate. I mean, and people are like, what about the Tara Reid thing? I'm like, yeah, you, you guys went from believing Kavanaugh must believe all women to like an actual credible sexual assault accusation that's been around, that's been, you know, substantiated. They don't even want to look at that. And people are asking, like, the guy's been creepy. Even if I took the Tara Reid out of the situation, the guy's on video sniffing and fondling children and women. And he's bizarre. He doesn't make sense. You know, how what? the hell is that the candidate? And how the hell do they think he's going to win? So I think the, what they're going to end up doing is they're going to pull him, have him step down for medical reasons, which I don't think anyone's going to argue with at this point. He's insane. Uh, and whoever they put it in is who they wanted this whole time. And if it's Hillary Clinton, I will never stop laughing at how they just 
Fuck. Well, they 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 just they just tweeted. They hell. just tweeted that uh, she's uh, th- th- something about she's going to be appearing at some thing with Bernie. Like it was like they dropped a little tiny hint oh, yeah. that she's going to be doing something with him or uh, showing some support or something. Biden. Yeah, Biden. So I'm like, uh, yeah. watch, watch me. I swear to God, if they make Hillary Clinton switch her in last minute, like she didn't win the first time. Doesn't no matter how much you cheat, she will not win this time either. Like it's insanity. Who would vote for her? Satan in a pantsuit? I mean, <laughs> here's the thing. The thing. A lot of independents and libertarians. I mean, yeah. Trump says a lot of things. He can be a bit mild. Sometimes he says things myself, and I'm like, oh. oh I know. Right. They, you know, they, they, they should. Like, they, yeah, they need someone that, like a full time person to just uh, smack the phone I, out of his hand. Smack the phone out of his hand. Shut up. No, I, but you know, at the end of the day, he's like not doing anything I don't do. Or yeah. People I know do. He's one of us. He talks like one of us. And he doesn't put up with things and he doesn't play it nice. And, and that's why he's successful. So if anything, I think people are going to turn out even more. You know, a lot of people weren't sure if he was going to take it serious. And then you see the economy. You see him like fighting a system that is so rigged against him, a fake impeachment. You know, the, these Democrats did not care about our needs when it came to the stimulus bill or all this. They never cared about what we really wanted. They had their own agenda instead of helping people. It was, that was kind of like insulting. The people. Is he perfect? No. But he, I love him. Like, I, I love what he does. He's so right. You know, when you see Biden, when someone's, you know, talking to Biden, Biden gets mean and nasty. Like, like he's like that cantankerous old man. The Frisbee goes over the yard and he won't give it back. Like, that's Biden. But Trump's like, he'll just say something to a reporter. And you're like, oh, that's funny. It's funny because you're just, you're done with it too. Yeah, I think we're all at the point Trump is. And so even when he talks probably too much about himself and does other things, it's inherently kind of endearing because he is a narcissist. There's no bad doubt about that. Like, good so. you know, there, he's definitely a narcissist. That just like I, I don't want to. I don't want him to give any more I'm ammunition. Awesome he's not even a narcissist on their level. I'm like, yeah, that's I, nothing to what I've seen. So you know, I, I don't even. I don't want him. To, I don't want any. I don't want to give them any ammunition. Like I'm, I'm in between. Like I'm not really. I, I like I'm for logic and reason. And I'm not finding it on both sides, but I do think that he's there fighting hard for us. And he does not, he does not have an easy job with everybody. He doesn't. I feel like he could do no right. You know what no. I mean? He, Even he when he's doing, when he is, when he is doing it right, it, it, it's still not doing right. It's just like, it's like, I don't understand people that. Are people are tired of it because it's not yeah. just him. They've been doing it to everyone. It's just Trump's the one person who's got the balls to actually stand up for it. And when you think of all the, what he's been through, the lies, the, all the disgusting memes, they make all the hell that he gets for it. And at yeah. the end of the day, you, he'll just like hug a flag and he'll give a great speech and you're just like, ah, that's that's what America is. It's imperfect, but loud and proud. Like it's yeah. just, he represents what most people are. And I think it's probably the first time and I love Reagan, but this is probably the first time we had a president that we'd want to get a beer with. Or, you know what I mean? Like, just like, yeah, he's one of us. He's just, he's, he gave it all up to help this country. He gives up his salary. He, he gives up his privacy. He gave up a lot to be yeah. dragged to the mud because in his heart, he believed that he could fix it um, on a logistics issue. You know, the bad trade deals we had, all the shady things that were going on. He's doing the best he can. He wanted to drain a swamp. I just don't think he realized it was going to be the Everglades uh, of the DOG and everyone covering for each other. It just, they spied on him. I mean, he, they spied on a president. Yeah. During a campaign, yeah, it still couldn't find anything, but completely illegally. And then made it up. Right yeah. Do you do you follow that guy Dan Bongiorno? I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like uh, that one speech he gave like scared the shit out of me. You know how they they that that the dossier the dossier was an article from the New York Times, no, from the, the Wall Street Journal ten years ago, and they just took that and changed the names. Like it was like holy shit, and you could do the research and go find it. Yeah. You know, and, it, problem. And, and I don't think most people realize you, our government, the DNC, the DOJ and, and the FBI tried to do a coup to put in the president that they wanted. And most of Americans are like, ah, conspiracy theory talk. <gasps> no, that happened. You can look that all up. And Dan's really good about he, he's a long video, but it explains yeah. everything. The incestuous, you know, nepotistic nature. Of, of the Democratic Party. And it's got Republicans that are crooked, too. I'll call them out, too. I mean, it takes two. 
It takes a rhino yeah. and someone that doesn't believe in America to just so, them out. So. My, my producer, I, you can't see any, uh, he sees all the um, comments and stuff like that. We don't, but uh, there's an inordinate amount of uh, people asking today, would Randy say hello? I don't want to bother him if he's not doing anything, but they're like, he's people like. He's, uh, we've got friends staying with us. And, okay. Uh, no, I'm like, well, so right, uh, like, I, I, I'm a wrestler, you know that. So I would like, they, those guys are like off the charts uh, on a different level. But, um, you're, well, you know how much people love him. So uh, he, he said, my, my producer said the phone's blowing up. Where's Randy? Where's Randy? We, yeah. we had a big scare. We had a pretty big scare there for a minute with the, the heart attack. But it's Randy. So oh, yeah. Roll it out with the phone rumor. Roll that, that, it and then back to the hospital. I'm like, you know, I can drive. Yeah. But, you know, it's crazy that he's, a, like, one of the greatest athletes ever in tip-top shape, and you can still have a heart attack. Well, it, it wasn't a health issue. It wasn't a diet issue. It certainly wasn't an exercise issue. Uh, he has very abnormally thick blood, and we didn't know about that. He'd, he'd kind of known, like, tests would come back, like, well, that's kind of thick. But he had an extra amount of iron and an extra amount of hemoglobin, so he's made to clot. So uh, the tiniest thing caused him to clot. So he's going to have to be on blood thinners forever. And I didn't realize what that even was until everyone was like, I have thick blood. And he has to get like drained every two weeks. I mean, who would have thought leeches actually? I, yeah, when you, yeah, when you just said that, I, I thought it was something really dirty, but I won't say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, uh, I guess a lot of people have this blood issue. And I mean, he's a, he's a beast. He's made to be stabbed and lived. I'm like, you realize you're made to like stab and like clot immediately. Literally, I've, I've seen it. He's a, he's a warrior. He's got like an extra rib too. Like, and he's got like these flat, his feet are like, like Bigfoot feet. They're amazing. And then just, he's just a, he's built for this. And he's, people see him, they expect him to be like six foot five. And he's like, oh. no, but you don't need him. Yeah. <laughs> he's one of the baddest men on the planet. One, one of the baddest men on the planet. There's no doubt about that. I scream that y'all I'll be good. I keep remembering when I'm uh, running for Congress, I guess. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. I know I said. Well, you can tell me that joke later. <laughs> so what's your platform? I know I know your battery's running out. What's the platform? When are people gonna find you? Why are they gonna vote for Mindy Robinson? Uh, if you are in the Southern Nevada area or know anyone that is right now, please, please, you have like another week, week and a half to sign up to register to vote. Um, please register as a Republican. Even if you're a libertarian, I love you guys, but you will, it doesn't change anything. Just, just won't be able to vote in the primary. So right now we have a guy, oops, 10%, we got this. Okay. Right now we have a guy that, who's in the lead. And if you're a Republican or conservative, just a patriot in general, he's anti-gun, he's pro-abortion. He wants an, an income tax. We've never had one here. He's pushing for that. Um, just issues like that. I'm like, I can't believe this guy, you know, whatever. So it's very important to vote in the primaries to pick the best candidate that, that agrees with you, even if it's not me, look everyone up and find, you know, what issues and everything aligns up. And everyone should be doing this because I think the primaries are going to everywhere. And um, just be an educated voter. You have time. We're getting mail-in ballots. Google everyone. Google every issue. You know, you're not being rushed. Please just, please get out there because we have to. We can't just sit back and assume people are going to vote for the, the best people and vote for the best laws anymore. That's nope. out the window. Yeah. So there's rampant voter fraud. And, and we really have, the only way to overcome that is to overvote and, and have just an, an incredible 100% turnout and, and just a motivation and, and take it back and then fix the electoral college. Right now, you don't need an ID to vote or register in Nevada. You don't need to prove you live here. You don't need anything. You could register day of, you could just drive in, register and vote. And yeah. now they're all mail-in ballots. You, you don't have to show up to the polls and, and look someone in the eye to cheat. You just mail out a thousand ballots. I've got a huge issue with that. You wanna make a bad law, make a bad law. I wanna make sure the people are voting on it. So. We need to fix the electoral system. Got to be active. You can go to um, MindyRobinsonForCongress.com. That's all my stuff. It's where you can donate. This is so grassroots. You wouldn't believe it. Every dollar is going to something amazing and, and worth it. And, and you know, I'm just, I'm, I think more people should be involved. You don't have to be a politician to get into politics. In fact, it's probably better if you're not. So, yeah. you know, look into your local politics. Don't just care about the president. Care about your representatives and your senators and even the state senators and those people. So... If you want to change America and you don't like the way it is, you have to actually go out there and do it and motivate people. That's as simple as that. Word. I have a quick question for you. Uh, I know you need as much publicity as possible. Do you yes. remember Stuttering John from the Howard Stern Show? I used to work with him. Yes. So Stuttering John has a podcast, and he, he reaches a lot of people. But he is hardcore anti-Trump. He hates it. Okay. okay would, you, would you want me to hook you up I with him? And, okay. All right. Cool. 
because I don't want to start a, a war or anything, but John is a sweetheart and he's a very, very, very good friend, but I know you can hold your own and controversy brings attention and you need attention so you can get elected. I can hold my own. I've never been afraid of a debate and I'm always, you know me, I'm not yeah. going to need me. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then if he does anything <laughs> stupid, if he does anything stupid, Randy will beat him up. <laughs> Randy will tell, him, tell me to beat him up. I'm yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. You probably, well, you probably could, but because I know you're how tough you are. But no, John's a good guy. I'll, I'll, I'll hook you guys up if you guys want to do something. Yeah. And I, I what about Twitter? They can find you on Twitter. Oh, uh, you can find me by my name on, on any of the platforms. And I Heart Mindy would be the handle for, I used to be a model. Sorry about the goofy thing. But I Heart Mindy would be the Instagram and the Twitter. And then Mindy Robinson. You'll see the page. There's a personal one is boring, but the page with the flag and all the fun stuff and the Congress stuff. That's and what about R Red, White, Nephew? Is that, that still Red, around? Red, White, Nephew, apologetically patriotic. Uh, I'm going to start trying to do some remote episodes since this quarantine happened. Yeah, try yeah, shit. I don't really need a studio in LA to do it. We can just no, do but it you, should, you, should, you should check out what I'm on right now. It's called StreamYard. So you can say how easy it is. You can even run, you can even run it yourself. And if so I like, because my phone ran out. Just so okay, no, I, I got you. But um, like, I, I'm lucky enough to have this amazing uh, person I know who's extremely intelligent running it on the other side. And you met Noah earlier. So, but um, I, I know people that can just sit here and do it themselves. I just really don't have that kind of intellect. <laughs> So, but uh, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I'm going to go up to my roof now. I don't know if uh, you, you're my Facebook friend. So I'm going to go live in about 15 minutes on my roof. I want you to check out what this city does for all the people that are putting their neck on the line so our lives can be normal. I'll try. I'm going to charge my phone. Apparently. Okay, you go. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Mindy Robinson, thank you so much. I would say anybody in Southern Nevada, you better vote for her because you're crazy. She's going to fight for you. And, and income tax, fuck that. Oh, my God, right? Yeah. All right, Mindy, thank you so much for coming on. You were awesome. Uh, in 10 minutes, I'll be up live on Facebook on my roof, going, uh, making sure everybody knows how much to appreciate. We appreciate all these people out there, what they're doing for us, and we're going to go and celebrate them and thank them like we do every night in New York. And uh, just because that's what we do in New York, that's who we are. And everybody across the world, it was great to see those planes fly over today. I kind of got a little choked up just because. You know, it's what a way to say thank you and just people are aware of how great and what how brave these people are. And uh, it, it, we have to thank them every day because they are really, really working hard and putting their lives on the line. You know, you don't have to thank me, but I do go out and I do have to make sure that, you know, these, these stores are supplied with what they need. So I, I, I go out and I do my thing, but I, I, I got hand sanitizer. I got a face mask. I don't touch anybody. I don't do anything. So uh, there goes Mindy. I guess her phone died. But thank you very much, Mindy. Thank you, Battle Chats, for doing all you've done. Thank you, Bright Shot. Thank you, Richard Prinzi. Thank you, uh, Prosecco and Palms. Thank everybody over at Sterling Assault for my beautiful rings. Bling, bling. And... Uh, thank you for tuning in and listening. I think that was kind of fun with Mindy coming on. And uh, maybe next time she'll come on with Randy or something. I know everybody wants to see Randy. Sort of, yeah, it would have been cool. But uh, Mindy's been my friend first and foremost. And I, I wish her all the best of luck. Go to grillosaftershockxl.com. Like and subscribe. And on YouTube, it's very important. Uh, just because it's YouTube and this is what you do these days. So I'm going to, uh, about, uh, about five, six minutes, I'll be up on my roof. You can tune in live again just uh, on my regular page. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll go to the aftershock. No, no, you help me. We'll, we'll do it on the, the, the new page. We got a new page up on Facebook. I got Grills after, Aftershock XL page on Facebook and uh, I guess some fan thing. If you want to subscribe, by all means, I, I accept everybody. If you're a jerk, I'm going to throw you right off. I don't, you know, I don't mind that some of these people on John's site and stuff like that, they're so mean. They're so, I, I get it. But like, you know, I, I go and share everything that like I'm doing when I go ahead and, you know, I, I, I put it up on these groups and some of these groups are just like, they're viciously mean. Even when I go put up the video of me going on my roof in the city doing something as wonderful as, like we, we do every night, they, they don't care. They're just fucking jerks. And they're, you know, but I know that. All the Howard Stern fans are just really, really rough. I love them all. They're the most loyal people. But some of them are just really just uh, so mean. But I don't care. I ignore it. It doesn't affect me. I just don't understand it because that's just not who I am. But, yeah, uh, like and share and do what you got to do. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I, I, you know, I don't often get political. 
again, I, I, I stay away from that because, you know, I just don't have, I, I, it's too much for me. I'm, I'm here to sh have fun, but you know, Mindy is a, a good friend. I wanted to make sure that she got her, uh, her comeuppance and got to tell everybody that, you know, the Southern district of Nevada, you better vote for her. I'm telling you the girl's smart, super smart, and she will fight for you. And I just, she, she the girl's uh, got a mouth on a man. She knows how to handle herself. It would be smart for the people of Southern Nevada to vote for her and, and do that. Yeah, follow her. She's, she's really funny. And she's like, Go to her Twitter page. Her Twitter wars are epic. She shuts people down. Shut it down. So uh, just thanks for tuning in. About time to go to the roof. And I want to thank everybody for coming on. I appreciate everything. I love everybody out there. And we'll get through this soon enough. Can I go out now? Can, can